Novichok, a nerve agent which is the deadliest ever made. It is known as a fourth generation chemical weapon that was created under a Soviet program with a code name Foliant. It was developed between 1971 and 1993 in Russia and adapted for military use. However, Russia has never officially confirmed its existence. According to scientists, Novichok is believed to be the deadliest nerve agent ever made, with some variants possibly five to eight times more lethal than better known poison gases, such as VX or sarin. We will explain what Novichok is and why this most powerful nerve agent comes to public attention. The name Novichok means newcomer. It's a group of nerve agents which consists of some binary chemical weapons. They can affect a person through inhaling or ingestion, or can also be absorbed through the skin. The person who gets affected by this agent feels meiosis, sweating, difficulty breathing, convulsions, involuntary urination, and vomiting. To know the history and origin of Novichok, we should know that what was happening during the Cold War. The Cold War period is the period of 1945 to 1990, in which the Western countries and the USSR were in a state of hostility. At that time, they were working on the development of mass destruction weapons. Both countries developed a wide range of different agents. The information about some of them is still protected under the name of Top Secret. Some of these cases came into highlights. One of them was the program Foliant and Novichok. Both programs were developed by the USSR in reaction to the USA and the British invention of the VX agent. Novichok's existence was revealed by chemist Dr. Vil Mirzayanov in the 1990s by the sources of Russian media. Dr. Vil Mirzayanov, after some years, defected to the US. He wrote a book named State Secrets and published the chemical formula in his book. To know the origin of this invention, we should go back some decades. After World War I, it was easy to know that the next war would run with chemical warfare agents. The preparation of potential participants was made more intensive by getting an evaluation from the early CWA's experiences. In 1934, a person named Otto Bayer launched a project on synthetic insecticides at industrial corporation IG Farben in Germany. He assigned this research branch to the chemist Gerhard Schrader. In 1936, Schrader's interest turned to compounds related to esters of phosphoric acid. He did systematic work on organophosphate insecticides, which led to the synthesis of more than 2,000 compounds. One of them was highly toxic. This was named Tabin. Schrader and co-workers later discovered a more lethal organophosphate compound similar to Tabin, propan 2 ilmethyl phosphonofluoridate they named this compound sarin because of the team members, Schrader, Ambrose, Ritter, and Vanderlin. These inventions were reported to the German Ministry of War. In 1937, they took some samples of Tabin and sarin and sent them to the German Army Weapons Office. They found its value for military purposes. The participants involved in this project were rewarded secretly. Military men gave it a code name Trillion, and work on these compounds was started. This tabin and sarin were helpful in the invention of a pinocolal analog of sarin named Soman in 1944. They were invented by Nobel laureate Richard Kuhn and Conrad Hinkel. These nerve agents tabin, sarin, and Soman were named as G agents. They named them G agents because G stands for German, as German researchers are at the back of this group of compounds. In April 1945, the Nazi regime produced almost 90,000 tons of tabin, 1,300 tons of sarin, and 20 tons of Soman. They were never used in World War II. After World War II, the development and production of chemical warfare agents started. The Soviet and Allied forces took over the nerve agent production facilities and technologies of the Germans. Both forces reorganized the military potential of these agents. They used them in their own way. As a result, VX agents were formed by the British, British later traded VX technology with the USA's thermonuclear weapons. On the other hand, Russian scientists developed independently VX agents, which later became the series of Novichok agents. They kept it a secret, but built up enormous stockpiles of chemical weapons. When World War II ended, these international countries agreed to ban the development and use of all chemical and biological weapons. Later on, at the end of the Cold War, they all agreed to prohibit their development, stockpiling, and transfer of all chemical weapons developed during World War I, first generation, World War II, second generation, and the Cold War, third generation, under the name of Chemical Weapons Convention, which was drafted on the 3rd of September 1992 and was signed on the 13th of January 1993. 
The main aim of Chemical Weapons Convention is to complete destruction of most types of chemical weapons under a specific period of time. Later on, it was administered by the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons OPCW, on the 29th of April 1997. The purpose of OPCW is to inspect the chemical industries and destruction of chemical weapons, except for agents which are used for medicines and civil use. All these destruction activities must take place under the verification of OPCW. In September 1992, a researcher of the State Research Institute of Organic Chemistry and Technology, Vilmar Zayanov, published an article that stated that the USSR violates the Chemical Weapons Convention and is continuously producing and testing the nerve agents of the third generation. Today, all that information about Novichok is only possible because of the interviews and publications of Merzayanov, Yuglev, and Zelizniakov, as well as from the chairman of the Union of Chemical Security, Lev Fyodorov. Merzayanov was arrested by the USSR, but later released. He has then defected to the USA. Professor Alastair Hay, belonged from the University of Leeds, said that Novichoks were never declared to the organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons, and the chemicals never form part of any control regime, partly because of uncertainty about their chemical structures. The Novichok have come to public attention when they were used as a killing agent. Secret agencies use them for their purposes because of the reason that their components are not on the banned list so that they can easily be transported, handled, and stored. Some of them can take effect very quickly. They're designed to be more toxic than other chemical weapons, so some versions would begin to take effect rapidly, within 30 seconds to 2 minutes. Some of the agents are known to be binary weapons. It means that the nerve agent is typically stored as two less toxic chemical ingredients. When they're mixed, their reaction produces the active toxic agent. Some variables of Novichok are 5 to 8 times more toxic than the VX nerve agent. Some Novichok agents are liquids, some are existing in solid form. It means they could be dispersed as an ultrafine powder. In 1995, Novichok was used for the first time by a Russian businessman, Ivan Kivileti, and his secretary Zarya Zmailova. In Moscow, the poison was in Kivileti's telephone receiver. At first, it was said that they were poisoned with cadmium, but Russian and foreign media reported that it was Novichok. On March 4, 2018, another case was reported, when Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia were poisoned in Salisbury, England. Sergei Skripal was likely the target of an order execution. He was charged by the Russian court in 2006 that he had given the names of Russian agents in Europe to Britain's MI6 during 1990. This deadliest nerve agent attacked another victim, Charlie Rowley, and his girlfriend Dawn Sturgis in June 2018. They were affected accidentally by spraying a small perfume or aftershave bottle in a park at Salisbury. Don Sturgis died a week after, while Charlie Rowley recovered after some time. The police connected that the poison was the same as that of ex-Russian spy Sergei Skripal. After the poisoning attacks in the UK in 2018, these Novichok agents are included in the Chemical Weapons Convention list by Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons in November 2019. As further investigation happened after Skripal's case, the police found that in 2015, Bulgarian arms dealer Emilian Gebrev, his son, and one of his company's executives were also victims of Novichok. The doctors were unable to identify the name of the poison at that time. Recently, in the year 2020, Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny was also poisoned through his cup of tea. He was traveling from Tomsk to Moscow. He fell ill, and then the plane has to make an emergency landing in Omsk. He was hospitalized and then put in a coma for about two to three weeks. Navalny's blood and urine samples confirmed that he was a victim of Novichok, but that was a new type of Novichok that is not included in the chemical weapons convention list. After his recovery in Germany, Navalny decided to return to Russia, where he was immediately charged and taken to prison. Now, we should know how Novichok works. When this nerve agent affects a body, there must be three main symptoms, muscarinic, nicotinic, and central. Muscarinic cholinergic causes pupil constriction, glandular hypersecretion, urination, defecation, diaphoresis, and gastric emesis. Nicotinic symptoms belong to initial defasciculating, which leads to weakness and attack of paralyze. Lastly, central nervous system, nerve agent poisoning, emerges as irritability, fatigue, lethargy, seizures, coma, and mostly fatal respiratory depression. Dr. Mirzayanov said there were antidotes, which are named atropine and athene, they could help in stopping the action of the poison, but they were not a cure. If a person is reacted with that nerve agent, it is suggested that their clothing should be removed and their skin should wash with soap and water. Their eyes should be rinsed. They should be given oxygen also. After going through all these facts, we came to know that after passing about 30 years of the invention of this mysterious compound, we're still unaware of the actual data. It seems to be still in the top secret. 
it is essential to add all kinds of Novichok agents to the chemical weapons convention list. If they are listed, precautionary measures can be taken to avoid future tragedies. There will also be fewer chances of getting victim from this agent. This is no doubt will become a big step to avoid any future mishaps.